Every year, the Latet organization comes out with new poverty figures in Israel. According to the latest, over one quarter of all Israelis are currently living in poverty. This includes one million children. Hello and welcome to Inside Israel. I'm Mariam Azarcher. The latest poverty figures may come at a surprise. The Israeli regime is now accused of whitewashing those figures. Shortly after the report by Latet, Tel Aviv came out with its own figures. The numbers, however, are still daunting. A new report says that the poverty rate in Israel has increased to 25%, well above any other OECD member. Furthermore, it says that one million Israeli children are living in poverty. The report by the nonprofit organization Latid says that 2.3 million Israelis and 530,000 families are living in poverty as of December 2019. The numbers are the highest figures reported six years since the organization has produced what is known as an alternative to the official poverty report. Shortly after this report was released, the Israeli regime released its own poverty report. The official report differs a little bit from latest report, but the numbers are still daunting. Israel's National Insurance Institute says that child poverty climbed by two percentage points to 29.1 percent. The poverty in the marginalized Arab community in Israel rose and remained much higher than in the rest of the population, from 42.6 percent to 44.2 percent. The reason for such a high poverty rate? According to Leited, it is due to the frequent and continuous election campaigns, a paralyzed Knesset and a transitional regime that cannot govern. To top it off, the stagnation in poverty rates over a long period also contributed to the whopping 25% poverty rate. The report by Leited also cites that there are no multi-year operating programs by the regime or no concrete plans from authorities to relieve and bring down the rising poverty rate. It also says that policy and the regime is non-functioning to help those in need and is making them wait until at least a new regime is forged. According to a survey, at least 66% of the Israeli public considers the regime the primary body responsible for reducing poverty and social gaps. Some 36.9% of the public believe the regime refrains from setting targets for poverty reduction as long-term results are not of interest to politicians. Independent Israeli-American journalist Joshua Tartakovsky joins us from Beijing for more on the topic. Mr. Tartakovsky, it's always great to have you here. So 25% of the Israeli population is in poverty. That's a big number. How much of a priority is the poverty rate for the Israeli regime? First, the cost of living in Israel is extremely high, not only in housing, but also in food and clothes and other areas. It's a, a very, very difficult to live in Israel for a significant percentage of the population. So it's not surprising that a quarter of the Israeli population is already at a below poverty level. Secondly, while in the fact the poor population was spread out in the periphery of the country, now in the big cities you can find a significant percentage of the, of the poor. So you see a kind of a double reality where you have people living a luxurious lifestyle in the big cities but also a very high percentage of poor people who live in the same city. Also, 7% of Israel's GDP goes to so-called defense, to arms and to wars and to occupation and to um, missiles and to guns and, and, and planes. So all this means is that there is no poverty reduction target by the Israeli regime. If other countries have a certain plan of having a poverty reduction target of every 10 years or five years, reducing the poverty in the country, the Israeli regime has no such target because for the Israeli regime, reducing the poverty level is simply not a priority. And in fact, what the Israeli regime does on a regular basis is to cut off from social funding and from social programs in order to reduce taxes. So it hits those who need it the most. And while it does have many startups in Tel Aviv and in other places, these startups employ only a limited number of people who make most of the wealth. 
And also another issue we need to consider is that both Israeli Palestinians and Ethiopian Jews are extremely discriminated against by the uh, by various employers in the country. And financial support in the country is not tied to the salary people earn. Finally, it's important to mention the issue of education. The youth in Israel in many ways is neglected by the Israeli regime because the many students do not receive the necessary education that they need. According to the Adva Center, only 32% of those who graduate will enter college within the following eight years. So right now, there's this political deadlock in Israel. Two elections, and now we're on the horizon for a third one. Does this impact those in poverty? So right now, since there is no elected government in the country, there's also no budget. So since there's no budget, various government ministries are not getting the money they need. And in fact, many hospitals in Israel are currently underfunded. And what recently happened in December 2019 was that the Israeli regime sat down and they decided to cut off 3.2% all across the various government industries and to take the money, which was 22 billion shekels, into paying the salaries of people who work for the military uh, sector and security sector. So it is not a surprise that 66% of Israeli respondents believe that the Israeli government is extremely neglectful of their needs and of the people who need support. And if we look ahead, then in fact, what is going on at the moment is that the Israeli deficit lies at 3.7% of the GDP. And that surpasses the 2.9% of the GDP, which was appointed to it earlier. So once there is a budget, if and when that happens, every, right now everything is in limbo. People don't know what's going to happen. But it, when the, if and when they do have a budget, they're going to have to first of all pay off the deficit. So there won't be any money for new programs or to take care of the elderly or the poor. And to take care of existing programs, there'll be even less money for that. And where the money will go is most likely to pay off the defense deficit because that's where a lot of the deficit comes from from the defense budget that went a little bit wild. Does this political deadlock mean an excuse for Israel? I mean, does it mean less responsibility from the officials? The regime is directly responsible for the fact that a quarter of the population is poor because while other OCED countries spend about 21% on average on social programs and on poverty alleviation, the Israeli regime spends 14% of its GDP on social programs and poverty alleviation. And Professor Momi Dahan, who is a researcher who is far from being a severe critic of the regime, says that on a consistent basis, what the regime does is that they cut taxes, and the way they cut taxes is by cutting social programs. So the problems and the needs of the, of the lesser well-to-do people and of the uh, people who suffer from various social issues is simply not a priority for the region. And the fact that you have many elderly people who are cold at night and cannot sleep well, or people who lack medication and cannot afford their medication in full, that's simply not a priority for the region. So the, the government simply does not invest enough in high quality education for all of the citizens. And instead, it created a huge military industry complex where the, the, it earns a lot of money from the defense industry because it sells arms to other countries all over the world. And it puts an incredible amount into the arms industry. And uh, every time, less and less and less into the social needs of its own citizens. Thank you, Mr. Tartakovsky. Mr. Joshua Tartakovsky, Israeli-American from Beijing. For those who have seen the responsibility surrounding the rising rate of poverty firsthand, it's not the numbers that matter, but the severity of the crisis. In this next case study from Inside Israel, we reveal the extent of despair faced by children, elders, and those most vulnerable.
So several things are really hard. Now we are in the winter and many people are sick. The hospitals are full. People are lying in the hallways because there's not enough place for people to live in. If you are elderly people, including Holocaust survivors, many people that are old in Israel just do not have enough money to live. The security uh, that they get from the Israeli government is not enough because life expense is really high in Israel. Mm -hmm. So for those people living in Israel, it's just hard. If you're young, it is very hard to possess to own a home, a house of yourself. It takes many, many years until you cover all the costs of building a house. If you're middle class and higher, you got good life in Israel. It's a good place for you. So that's the distances, the gaps, the gaps. Look at the cost of things in Israel. You can see exactly where is the interest of the government and, and of many citizens. For instance, it doesn't cost too much to go to travel abroad. To Europe, it's even very cheap because that's the feeling that now we are in prosperity. But when you buy food, that is very expensive for you. It's not so expensive to own a car, but when you go with the car on the road and you start paying for everything, then it becomes very expensive. Um, people do not use too much um, public transportation uh, because public transportation is, is expensive. So all those things make life in Israel not easy. People understand that the public education in Israel is not good enough. So if, you, if you're not rich enough, you are only dependent on the public education and you don't get good education. If you're rich, you look to our private education. More and more people are looking for private education. Same thing with your health. If you are rich, then you get private health and you get better treatment and you get better hospitals. If you look for the public health, then you're not in a good situation. Same thing about transportation. Even on the Jewish side, same thing is regarding going to the army. Today, although it's mandatory for the Jewish people to go to the army, 50% of the Jews do not go to the army. Many people that have money and connections do not go to the army. And you see all of a sudden that the combat forces of Israel, most of the people there are from lower classes. Definitely so. There's one year of, now we are in the middle of the third elections. We are throwing probably around a billion dollars just for elections, but we don't have money for the hospitals. That's one problem. The second problem is that there's no ministries that are actually taking any decisions and any reforms. So everything is in a deadlock. The third problem is that part of the budgets is not giving, given to the people because it, because it needs decisions. And there is no government to make those decisions. So the last year, is a very bad economical year for Israel. Our national debt is growing and growing and growing, and the citizens have harder life. We have a very bad government from the economical perspective of equality for 40 years in Israel. 40, not only the last government. So they are not doing enough at all. Actually, they're doing the opposite. This is, there's no equity and no justice. And those who are rich are becoming richer. And those who are poor are becoming poorer. And we need a different government. That is very bleak indeed. The fact that there might be even more children in poverty than originally recorded can add to the crisis. As you can see, there's still a lot more to discuss on this topic. So don't go anywhere, we're going to take a short break, we'll be right back. 
According to the number of reports coming out of Israel, it's both the children and the elderly folks who are vulnerable to poverty. According to Latet, 97% of elderly citizens supported by pension are not able to live in dignity. And children? Well, the majority of those living in Israel have a main diet of breads and spreads. According to both the reports by the Regime's Insurance Institute and the report by the nonprofit organization Lated, children and the elderly are both the most vulnerable when it comes to the issue of poverty. Over 76% of children that are living in poverty in Israel have a main diet of carbohydrates or breads and spreads, according to Lated. Also, almost 55% of Israeli children have skipped a meal or have had their meals reduced in 2018. The children's poverty rates place Israel as second to bottom in the OECD rankings, according to the National Insurance Institute. Israeli senior citizens are also impacted. According to Leited, 97% of elderly citizens supported by an old age pension are not able to live in dignity. A total of 78.2% said they experience loneliness, and 59.3% are unable to make necessary changes to their homes due to their financial situation. In addition, some 61.9% of benefits recipients said that they are in debt, a far greater share than the general population that is 35.3%. So why is this happening? There are no regime plans, systematic tools, and long-term processes making it hard to escape poverty or implement social change. Also, the Israeli regime is not making any new priorities and is not implementing serious measures. To get more on this topic, we had our team ask people on the streets of Tel Aviv a few questions. We started out with this question. What makes poverty thrive in Israel? Israel <laughs> מחירי הדירות מאוד יקרים, לא, ממש לא, הם לא עושים מספיק, הם לא עושים בכלל. כל התקציבים שלהם מוקפים, הם לא מפרישים את זה. אנחנו כארגון לתת עושים המון המון דברים. בארץ החיים באמת מאוד יקרים, בממוצע זה 20 אחוז יותר מבכל המדינות ה-OECD, המחירים של המחיה פה. ומה שהכי יקר כמובן זה הדיור, אבל גם מחיר של האוכל, מסעדות וגם אוכל שקונים בסופרמרקט מאוד יקר. אני חושבת שהמדינה עושה קצת, אבל היא לא עושה הרבה, והיא הייתה יכולה לעשות הרבה יותר. יש לנו כלכלה משגשגת, יש לנו אנשים שמרוויחים הרבה הרבה, אבל בכללי, ממש לא מספיק, והם היו יכולים לעשות הרבה יותר ולתת יותר תמיכה למי שהכי עני במדינה. הביקורת היא מספיקה היום כי אין לי ילדים, אבל ברגע שיהיו לי ילדים אני לא יודעת מה אני אעשה ומה שבטוח זה שאף פעם לא יהיה לי כסף לקנות דירה פה בארץ. אני לא יודעת באמת איך זה קורה, אבל אני מצרפת ואני יודעת שבצרפת יש הכי, יש הכי הרבה תמיכה באנשים שהם במצב כלכלי לא, לא חזק ופה אני יודעת שכמעט ואין. מאוד מאוד יקרים בישראל, במיוחד פה בתל אביב, שאנחנו כאילו כאן גרים בעיר מאוד יקרה. Uh, הכל יקר, כאילו גם ללכת לשוק, כאילו ללכת לסופר, הכל, אבל הדיור במיוחד מאוד מאוד יקר, זה המחירים בערך של פריס, עם משכורות של ממש לא פריס, <laughs> אז כן, המחירים מאוד גבוהים. ברור שבפריפריה יש מחירים יותר, הרבה יותר נמוכים, אבל בכללי אין... Uh, אין איזון בין המשכורות למחיר ה... לא, הממשלה בכלל לא, לא מתייחסת לזה כי היא בכללית מאוד ליברלית וזה לא ממש... זה לא הכיוון שלה, זה גם לא המטרה שלה ממש לתמוך באנשים. יש אה, עזרה מאוד מאוד נמוכה מהביטוח הלאומי ומהרווחה לאנשים נזקקים ובמצוקה, אבל זה מאוד נמוך ובכללי. למשל, אני יודעת שלילד כאילו ש... Mr. Anthony James Hall, the editor-in-chief of the American Herald Tribune, joins us from the U.S. Welcome to the show, Mr. Hall. Now let's start with this question. Israel is the main recipient of U.S. foreign aid. I mean, we're talking about at least $3 billion a year. Could that money have been used to end poverty in Israel? Yes, well, my assumption would be that money transferred from the United States, this is largely within the military establishment, and it's money handed over with the expectation that it will be used to purchase uh, U.S. weapons and such. 
Uh, now, uh, you know, the amount of money uh, changing hands in this situation, especially between the United States and Israel, it's a complex situation. And that uh, official payment every year of several billion dollars, that's a small part of the picture. For instance, what about the money that APEC uses to essentially bribe and buy uh, Congress, to buy um, House of Representatives, senators. Uh, this is a, a very um, corrupt use of money to buy political consent from a government, and yet that is what is happening. Where, where does that money come from? Why is there so much money uh, for war and armaments and so little money when it comes to the welfare of the people, their education, their health, uh, their pensions, uh, a minimal standard of life. Uh, we have our priorities drastically wrong, and this LATET report calls attention to that. Well, Israel is a part of the OECD. It has the highest poverty rate than any of the other members. Where will this level of impoverishment lead Israel to? Yes, well, this uh, is another uh, sign that Israel may be on its way to what might be called a failed state. The fact that there will be three elections in Israel uh, within one year, this is an indication that the energy of Israeli people, Israeli government, uh, Israeli business, that it's all being swallowed, it's all being absorbed and ingested into uh, this political deadlock. And the political deadlock does not have a position for a party advocating uh, better conditions for poor people and taking care of the marginalized and oppressed better. That isn't in the political calculation of you know who is vying to come to power in Israel. But what does this say about Israel? I mean, Israel is supposed to take care of its people, right? With a 25% poverty rate that has gone up from the year before, what can the citizens expect in terms of relief? My guess is that it will have uh, not much influence in Israel. Uh, the society is organized the way it is uh, because of you know powerful political forces uh, many uh, billionaires or a number of billionaires come from Russia and settle in uh, Israel. Israel has uh, no uh, extradition laws. You can't extradite criminals from Israel. So uh, people with great wealth who want to avoid um, criminal charges will, will live there. Um, so there's a, a very... Uh, entrenched status quo, I would say, in Israel, and it, it's going to be hard to shift that. Nevertheless, the Lantet report exists, and it does exemplify that there are some people in Israel who are worried about this issue, and uh, Israeli people have their share of uh, philanthropists and well-intentioned people who want to see uh, good life prevail for all human beings. I'm sure that constituency exists in Israel. Unfortunately, it just doesn't have much political influence. Well, thank you, Mr. Hall. That was Mr. Hall from the U.S. The rising poverty rate and its impact on the most vulnerable, including children, women, and the elderly, is set to grow according to the Israeli Central Bureau of Statistics. Now, will the regime take action before it's too late? Or is it going to be politics as usual in Tel Aviv? With that, we end this edition of Inside Israel. Let's hear what you have to say on this topic. Tweet to us at Inside underscore Israel. Until next time.